Hello everyone, it's me Jenny and I'm back in front of the DVD bookcase, woo! It has been a very very long time since I've done a movie review so bear with me as I kind of get back into the swing of things. Hi! Uh, today I will be reviewing one of my favourite movies of all time, Memoirs of a Geisha. Um, and to start off with this movie it's one of those rare movie experiences where the only way, I think this is the best media that this story could be told in. It's the only media, in my opinion, that this story can really be told in, in the way that the story is communicated. Um, I know that it's based on a book, I haven't read the book, but the way that this film is structured and the way that it's shot, it's the only way to present the story is in a movie format. Um, it's too concise a story to be a TV series. Um, it's too detailed visually and structurally um, and the cinematography for this film is just so detailed and so beautiful that it wouldn't be fully realised uh, in a cartoon or in a simple painting or um, one or two little segments. I don't think it could be visualised in a theatre show. I definitely don't think that you get the detail and the atmosphere and the world into a theatre performance. Um, and I don't think you get the details of the expressions from a theatre performance. I don't think you could get the same level of visual depth from this film if you read the story. And I'm sure in the book there are descriptions but this actually shows the world in a very dynamic, stunningly beautiful way. It is an art film in the sense that you can freeze at any point in this film and every frame is a painting in that you can freeze it and put that piece of frozen visuals up on your wall, blow it up into a just a painting and it would make a beautiful piece of art. Every frame has multiple layers of visual storytelling, multiple layers of just depth and I can't say enough about the visuals of this film, they are beautiful. Every frame says more than one thing. If a picture says a thousand words, then every frame says a thousand words in this particular story. There is so much visual... just depth is the only way that I can think of it. There's depth of frame, so there's stuff going in the foreground, there's stuff going in the background. There's always movement happening in every single frame. Movement of environmental features like snow or water or scenery, people in the backgrounds. The camera movements are dynamic and they work with the visuals on frame. There's a lot of really soft, beautiful things that could only really be captured by modern film technology. Things like dust blowing in the breeze and water effects. Um, just really beautiful physical character movement and um, environmental movement. And it's gorgeous and it's a kind of... it's kind of visual music. And I will go into the music in a minute, but the way that the movement of things on camera coincide with the kind of atmosphere of every scene. It's like you're watching a symphony um, in every frame. And that's not just the dance sequences, which there are dance sequences which are beautifully done and gorgeous, but it's every single frame. It's every single movement of all the actors, every single movement of the background actors, every single movement of non-physical things, as I said, dust and powder and steam and frost and it's it's beautifully the movement in this and the energy that you get from this film is really, it's beautiful. Um, as I said, you can freeze this at any point and the lighting and the colours are amazing. The colour palette of this film is phenomenal. Um, how every scene has a palette, has contrast, every scene has different levels of colour. I've just, the photography direction in this is out of this world in that every single frame has a different lighting scheme, a different colour scheme, every single arc has a different theme, every single um, scene has a different type of atmosphere and yet it's all part of one film and it's all consistent in a very streamlined, very very into the same story um, kind of timeline. Um, I love the fact that it's organised chaos, there's always stuff going on, there's never a still thing and yet you never feel overwhelmed by it, you never feel like it's chaotic, it feels like organised, it feels like a symphony 
Um, it's there's so many multi layers of every frame, every shot. Um, I think the acting is draw droppingly amazing uh, throughout, especially when you take into account that you have actors who are using different dialects, they're using different languages. Um, it's a multiple Asian cast playing Japanese characters speaking English. So you've got characters who are brought up in Japan and characters who are brought up in China doing Japanese accents, speaking English, using Japanese phrases, um, but for the most part speaking English and saying a lot of Japanese concept and really complicated ideas and trying to use similar sort of um, pronoun terms and titles and really trying to get that atmosphere across while being completely multilingual and the fact that with all of that language difficulty the actors are still so very telepathic. Um, the scenes where they're having dialogue you can get what's going on, the scenes where they don't have dialogue you can easily get what's going on. There are no true villains in this story because every character you can see exactly what's going on in their faces. Even when there's parts of the story that, um, you know, there's things that the main character doesn't quite understand watching it back or um, if you really follow the actors you really can see them project their emotions in a very natural visceral way considering as I said that a lot of them are using different languages that they're not used to. Um, again with the actors the physicality of this is really very impressive um, particularly for all of the females in this. Um, watching behind the scenes a lot of these actresses are trained in martial arts they're very very athletic and they were saying for the physical work that you do as a geisha getting up sitting down all of it's very controlled, all of it's very poised, um, it's a different sort of dance, it's muscles that people don't use um, and it is pain, it's pain in art and that's a whole theme within this movie is the pain in the art and the suffering of artists and the needs and wants of one versus the concept of what you're projecting. Um, and it's a very multi-layered film that way in that the actors are having to perform and it's a commentary on artistry and it's a commentary on art as well as being um, a story of romance and of culture and of um, the vulnerability of women. Um, it's a, such a beautifully structured film. It's a very simple story. Um, the complexities in the story come from um, character backgrounds and from characters who are very, they have very limited backstories. The actors project so much depth and so much um, backstory into what is very limited backstories for most characters. This is the greatest geisha of all time. She earns the money for the house. He was injured in the war. He owes him a life debt. Like, it, that's pretty much all that's said, but then how the characters react to each other, how they breathe life um, is brilliantly done. Um, I said I go to the music, the music in this is absolutely phenomenal, it's very um, classic um, but it's got a lot of really sweeping themes that again you could listen to the music in this film without, listen, without any visuals and you can get a sense of story. Similarly you could watch this film on silent and get a sense of story. Um, you can freeze every frame. There are some of the most beautiful shots of movie history in my opinion. There are some shots that I will remember forever and in this film is one of my favourite shots of all time which is the slow pan up over the river um, as the silk is dying um, and that says so much about the story. There's obviously the voiceover that's happening at the same time but it immediately makes you think of blood in the water and then it's something beautiful but then it's something so simple, it's dying, it's the baseline for artistry and it's something that's work and it's painful um, and it has so many things going into this just beautiful shot of red in water um, and it says so much about the type of the story point that it's in, it says so much about the history of the era, it says about the the background to the artistry that you've been living in, it's, it's one of my favourite shots of all time, I'm just going to say that. Um, I really love the atmosphere of this film, I love the pace, I love the direction, I love the constant themes that come in, there's themes of artistry as I said, there's themes of, there's obviously the water theme is very very prevalent, the blue eyes that are like water, water always finds another path, there's a lot of nature themes, I love the fact that there's a reasonable amount of Shintoism without it being a direct reference to Shintoism, so it's, you know, a very accessible for a Western audience. Um, and in that same sense there are alterations. This is not a true history, this is a fantasy history. This is um, based on research written into a 
narrative. It is not a true history. It's very, very unlikely that um, this, the, the main character did not exist. This is not a documentary in any way, shape or form. Um, they altered the geisha outfits to make them more accessible for a Western culture. They took in the waistline slightly. They took out some of the padding. They adjusted the makeup. They took down a lot of the traditional aspects in order to make it a more accessible visually story. Um, obviously a lot of the traditions are still in place but a lot of them have been drop down so it's more accessible. Um, similarly, a lot of the culture of geishaism, um, I don't know whether or not that's a term, is very picked and chosen. Um, it's a very secretive um, art form. Um, so a lot of the stuff may be true, it may be false. History is lost to those who don't write it and a lot of the concept of a geisha is you put on the mask, you hide yourself so you can become a living embodiment of art um, and because of that the actual truth behind the history is very much lost or inaccessible um, especially to someone who is not Japanese. Um, so discerning how much of this is actually um, true to history and how much of it is just um, kind of elaboration and frillying up for the sake of artistry and for the sake of the story, I don't know. But I really enjoy this film. I've watched it again and again and again. I watched it on repeat while doing GCSE art. Um, I rented it from the um, library and just watched it again and again for three weeks. Um, I bought this on DVD because I wanted to see behind the scenes and I wanted to own it for myself. Um, and I, It's one of those films I can watch again and again and it is a pure, beautiful film. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the morals, but it definitely does do a lot of um, really good storytelling and really beautiful artwork. It's a work of art about works of art. Um, and if you are interested in complex visual storytelling and um, kind of a bridge into culture, I'd really, really recommend it. It's kind of, I'd recommend this film in the same way I recommend things like Horrible Histories to Children. It doesn't matter if it's not necessarily completely accurate but if it gives you an interest in the culture and gives you a byway into it so that you then do research of your own and actually find out as much truth as you can from, from it then that is a good bridge and that is where I view this film. It's not true to history. I'm almost certain that no matter how much research you do it cannot be true to history but it gives you an insight into Japanese culture which has been thoroughly neglected and um, the concept of a geisha is said again and again. It is not what you perceive as a Western person to be a prostitute. It is not that. It is not about nudity. It is not about sex. It is about artistry and um, yeah. Um, that is my review. I cannot recommend this film enough. It is stunningly beautiful. It's not going to be for everyone but I love it. I watch it again and again and again and uh, there we go. I thought I'd start off on a classy note for this year. I'm sure I'll do some very stupid films in the future but uh, there we go. Um, first review of the year! Woohoohoo! Um, yeah, thank you for watching and um, feel free to comment. Uh, have you seen this film? If you have seen this film please do tell me what you thought about it. If you didn't see this film, oh well, I would recommend it if you are interested. Um, it's just a phenomenally beautiful film. This is a really long video, I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm getting back into practice. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye guys!